Superman and Lois talks about the extraterrestrial superhero beefcake, Clark Kent. You know the drill. He burns things, freezes others, and saves people from plagiarized Final Destination incidents. The only difference, though, is that this daddy is a literal dad. He fell deeply in love, got married, and is now the father of twin teenage boys, Jonathan and Jordan. After his mom crossed the Great Divide, he decided to leave the big city behind and to settle down in her farmhouse in Smallville. Now, the Kent boys are words apart from each other. One is the overachieving popular football star, the other is an introverted loner with mental health issues, though moving to Smallville might have turned everything topsy-turvy. After mysteriously surviving a not-so-small incident in the barn, they start snooping around hoping to sniff out a reasonable explanation. But what's been right under their noses exceeds the limitations of reason, and Soup couldn't keep his lips tight any longer. For 14 years, Clark just assumed his children were dumb as a rock. Although Superman's face is plastered all over the place, Jay and Jay never came close to making the connection. So when their dad told them about his secret identity, they got so annoyed and stormed off to a party. After discovering his extra special, Red Cheeks decides to try out a few new philandering tricks of his own. And since the damage to Tract, he set his sights on the one chick who tried to off herself a few months prior. In true Avril Lavigne fashion, He was a boy, she was a girl, can I make it any? Except Sarah here is already booed up with Teen Hawk. And he isn't exactly impressed with Jordan's slick moves. As soon as they lock lips, her fella appears out of nowhere and dry beats him and his brother. Here's the thing though. As it turns out, Loser Freak has superpowers. And he involuntarily almost burns everyone. Ta ta ta. Who could have guessed? I guess this makes him the trophy son now, because the moment Father Kent finds out, he immediately flies him to Antarctica to meet the ghost hologram of his dad's alien grandpa. And this Gramps isn't exactly the cookie and milk type. As soon as the duo reaches the place, he hits them with the cold, harsh truth. Little boy here ain't the Superman in the making, he's merely a noob. Sure, he can spew fire lasers out of his eyes and all, but that's barely a fraction of what his dad is capable of. A good case of once a loser, always a loser. You know what he can do, though? Abuse his newfound superpowers on the football field. Oh, how the tables have turned. In a single day, the brothers' personalities pulled the whole switcheroo. Jordan turned into the football hotshot, and Jonathan, well, I guess he's no champion after all. One city's treasure is another city's trash. In a matter of a few days, Johnny went from being the Tom Brady in the making of Metropolis to being Smallville's benched human leftovers. Oh, when the grown-ups' schedule is just as busy. Clarky is dealing with an obsessive stalker bent on destroying him for multi-universal reasons. Apparently, another version of Superman in another dimension went rogue or something and wiped up his entire planet. So Mr. Captain Luther, sir, held all the soups equally accountable. And he's out looking for blood. Meanwhile, Lois is also knee-deep in drama. Her ex-boss Morgan Edge and his group of lakeys are orchestrating some shady deals in Smallville. And she's the only one who can stop them. Being a super talented, super famous journalist means that she's got a few tricks up her sleeve. She's going to annihilate the shady prick by writing really mean articles about him. Too bad he isn't planning on backing down anytime soon. To be continued.